G'day guys, so here we are, we are back in uh, NZQN, Queenstown Airport in New Zealand on a beautiful evening here and I'm about to try out the latest iteration of the VL3 Evolution Community Mod uh, I couldn't tell you exactly what the specific number is but it is the one that has been released around about the 10th or 8th of October 2020 so it's come with this uh, awesome new livery here pretty cool orange sort of firebird color scheme oh, actually it looks like a lion it's a lion color scheme there you go so apparently the guys have made a few more tweaks to the flight model and uh, some of the performance handling on the aircraft interesting looking at that prop spinner how much it's vibrating there if the prop spinner was moving around that much then I would be pretty concerned to be honest so let's jump on board um, interesting okay so we're just idling here I've got no throttle on at all and you can see the oil temperature is in the red there so clearly that's an issue while the coolant temperature is 13 is in fact it's decreasing 13.4 degrees so we've definitely got some kind of bug with that engine modeling there because uh, if the coolant temperature is that low then obviously the oil temperature would be quite low as well Okay, so uh, basically we're just going to get airborne. We're going to do a little bit of a flight around the Wakatubu Basin here in Queenstown, uh, which is just this region here. It's Lake Hayes, and uh, yeah, we'll just have a bit of a look around, get a feel for the aircraft. Um, perhaps we will uh, initially take off on runway 23 here and just extend down the lake to uh, Rat Point here, and then maybe make our way up to Glen Orkey and uh, come in around the back way, back over Lake Hayes and, and this way. I spent about five years flying here but um, I've probably forgotten the names of all the local landmarks unfortunately but uh, I will do my best. So uh, we've just done the pre-takeoff checks and I'm good to go. Track IR is coming back on. Let's get this thing squared away. Okay. Pack and brake is released. We're on the left tank so we'll just keep an eye on the fuel situation. And uh, Okay, it's pretty cool. It's in, highlighted in green to show we're on the left tank. Let's just confirm that changes to green for the right tank. It does. It stays green on the left tank. I wonder if that's going to change to white. Not sure. Interesting. So it looks like it's supposed to uh, turn green when it's draining from that tank, which it was, but once you turn it on, it doesn't turn back off. So there's another little bug there. All right. Let's get underway and hope that this uh, oil temperature cools down once we get a bit of um, airflow over the aeroplane. Okay, it's full power. I'm away. I'm going to travel the gear and flap straight away because somebody criticised me for flying these uh, gear and flaps too quick. That manifold pressure seems to have gone up right to the top we'll go to 45 5500 rpm i did pre-select the uh, rpm a little bit lower i don't think i'll be talking to you again mate yes It's actually not true. Con Queenstown Tower controls all of the airspace around here. This is Deer Park. Uh, there was a, a, a little structure on top here from a f movie set many years ago, which is no longer used. And this mountain here is called Cecil Peak. And there's a ledge just here called Cecil Peak Ledge, which you can take a helicopter up to. I'm just going to level off and uh, bring the power back. She's nice and stable today. This is a golf course here, Queenstown Golf Course. I'm going to turn this guy off. And this is uh, Kelvin Heights, just passing below us on the left hand side. And the township of Queenstown itself is uh, just down here. I did see someone else mention this black line in the sim, and I haven't noticed it before but there does seem to be a black line running through the horizon for some reason interesting ok there's a, uh, a gondola ride that goes up this hill here to Bob's Peak and there's a little uh, a luge track and a um, sort of a restaurant and a tourist centre up there and this is 
Uh, ben Lomond is the name of this mountain up the top here. There's a tiny little island just here called Hidden Island and it's pretty much impossible to see from the ground when you're in Queenstown looking out across the bay here so um, it's uh, actually depicted here which is pretty cool. You can see Cecil Peak, uh, sorry Cecil Peak Ledge a little more clearly there as well. Alright let's level off here so we can have a bit of a look around. Yeah I definitely have not noticed that black line in the sim before. Very interesting. So we should have a placard here so I am going to bring the power back to 50, uh, 5000 RPM. Just a nice economic cruise power setting. Oh, it's a real nightmare that. Okay, track IR is going off. Yeah, the aircraft feels a lot more stable than it did the last time I flew it. There's actually a bit of inertia. It feels more similar to the original version. Uh, the last time it was much snappier. Um, now there's just a little bit more inertia feeling. This is Moak Lake on the nose here. It's kind of a heart shape. Let's turn this uh, fuel pump off. Ben Lomond up here. Okay, the all pressure, uh, sorry, all temperatures come down nicely. Okay, so we'll just do a 180 back out this valley here. One of the um, challenges of flying in mountainous terrain like this is the lack of horizon. So it makes it quite difficult to uh, set an attitude where you're not climbing or descending in the turns. Um, if you th look at the ridge lines as a horizon, which is sort of the natural thing to do if you're not used to it, you find yourself pitching up like this and uh, climbing and losing speed in the turn, which can cause you a bit of grief, obviously, if you run out of airspeed in a turn in mountainous terrain. Uh, this is Walter Peak over here. This is actually a farm station that runs along here. And there is a, uh, a an old steamboat that's been on this lake. It's called Lake Wakatipu, steaming between Queenstown and uh, Walter Peak for something like 100 years. And um, you can uh, take a joyride on that. We can see the uh, Remarkables over here with double cone at the top. Okay, this is uh, Sunshine Bay. And uh, Milford Sound is just over a couple of ridges over that way, about another 15 minutes flying time. And that is one of the most uh, spectacular parts of the world. We can see the Walter Peak Station over there.
Yeah, it's a real annoyance actually with my Trek IR. Every time I turn right, I lose the uh, picture. Recalibrated, see if that's any better. That's better. Okay, so that's a rat point down there, right on the edge. And we're just making our way up the northern arm here of Lake Wakatipu. And we can see uh, Pig Island and Pigeon Island just here. Pigeon Island is this one on the uh, closer side to us, and Pig Island is behind it. And uh, up at the end here is uh, uh, Glen Orkey. And uh, Mount Earnslaw is a big mountain just up here can't remember the name of this and this is uh, one of the sort of this whole area really was featured in the Lord of the Rings trilogy a little bit of turbulence around the mountains but you can see the the lake there's virtually no wind on the lake beautiful conditions These are the uh, Humboldt Mountains up here. Can't remember what these are called. And uh, the Greenstone Valley is just coming up uh, this side here. And this is the uh, Greenstone and I can't remember the name of this one. Uh, I know that at the top of it is K Creek. can see uh, Mount Inslaw just here. Spectacular part of the world. Well, we might as well do a, uh, a quick touch and go at the strip here at Glenorchy. So I'll set up a bit of a descent. Uh, it should be just here on the nose. Let's zoom in a bit. Yep, there it is there. So we'll just do a straight in approach for the touch and go. No traffic out here. This will be uh, pretty sporting, I think. So just bring the start progressively uh, reducing the power. challenge here is we're obviously pretty high so it's going to be very difficult to get the uh, speed back enough to get the gear and flaps out. Looking at the placard, so the gear down, uh, max speed with gear down is 81 knots and flaps is 67 which uh, seems extremely slow for the speed that this aircraft flies at. Yeah this line here, very strange huh? What's that about? Very strange. It's pretty much emulating the horizon line in the avionics. So we're going to have to um, put in a bit of a turn here to get the speed to reduce. And we do this pretty much by just loading up a bit of G on the wing. I think 
we'll be okay. Well, yeah, okay. The guy said they reduced the uh, the noise at high speed, but we've definitely still got it with the roll. Very wallowy in the roll there. See how much adverse yaw there is. Okay, so that means that when I roll, the nose pitches around a lot in yaw, which uh, is not a very nice feeling. Okay, we can treble the gear. Okay, two stages of flaps. Now try and uh, hold her on about 60 knots. Increase the RPM. You can see the airport's in shadow, but we're in the sun, so that creates a, a little bit of a hazard for us. Okay, flaps 55. Quite a short strip, so I'm just aiming for the end of the field here. Okay, power to idle. Full power, gear up, flaps up, let's accelerate, power back to 40 inches, it's fine. Look at that, absolutely beautiful postcard. Up we go. Okay, we'll do a bit of mountain flying. There's uh, Glenorchy there. So we'll just uh, make our way back through some of these valleys to uh, round the back way back to Queenstown. So let's see how that goes. So back in this direction. So even though we're zipping around through here, we still want to stay on one side of these valleys. We do want to give ourselves enough room to uh, make a reversal turn uh, if we do need to get out. So if we find ourselves heading down a one-way valley, then we want to have enough room to be able to reverse. So if we're flying in the middle of the, middle of the valley, then uh, we don't have as much room to do that. So we can see this is a dead end valley here, so it's a good example. So if we um, just stick to this side of the valley, continue that climb, but at this point we're not going to make it over that ridge. So we'll need to use as much um, of the valley as we uh, as we can, and we'll just fly around the edge of it and probably make our way over this ridge here in a 45 degree angle, because we don't want to be climbing up into this ridge and stalling out, and we'll just end up crashing about here. So. The idea is we'll just use as much of the uh, space as we have, so we stay nice and close to the mountain on this side. Just really taking care of our nose attitude, we want to make sure that we've got a good speed trend and that we're not pitching up with the ridge like this and seeing the speed reducing like that, thinking we're going to try and make it over. Now we probably would now, but that's not the plan, so as we get closer we just got to watch for this ridge here. And remembering not to keep pitching up into the turn like this, we do need to keep that nose down. 
so that's fine still climbing so there's my target ridges up here and you can see that I'm staying on this side of the valley so anytime if we're not going to make it I can just do that tight left turn and come back down this valley no worries at all and when I do cross the ridge I'm on a uh, on an angle so uh, I've got all that room on my left hand side to be able to do the reversal turn if needed so we're going to make it over this ridge no problem at all now okay so that's the safest way to uh, to tackle this bridge and I've still got the room to turn around there if I need to and I'm going pretty quick so I could reduce the speed and that's it we made it okay so we can see the uh, remarkables back over here so Queenstown is just down in here so we're just going to head our way through here to the uh, um, Skipper's Canyon and uh, then drop back down into Queenstown In fact, um, let's just follow this valley here with a right turn and back over skippers here. So I'll reduce the power and we'll just make our way down. Just want to keep good terrain awareness, obviously. can see we're pretty quick there's our V&E speed here the maximum speed so we do want to stay underneath that it's nice and smooth but if we hit some turbulence then uh, it, it could overstress the aircraft I mean this is aircraft's got like a 15 G uh, limit actually so we're probably okay but it's going to be more uncomfortable for us than anything else So you can see I'm still staying on this one side of the valley here and I'm just doing these gentle east turns to um, just keep a little bit of drag up so we can uh, get the descent going without um, uh, without uh, going too fast. These shadows and things on the back of the propeller are pretty cool. Okay, so we're almost down into where I want to be now, still staying on the right hand side. See that shadow on the prop, very cool, amazing. Okay, we can see there's the Skipper's Canyon Road in front of us. So we'll be turning right around this corner. We're all clear. Whoops. All right. Skippers. bridge that's where they do uh, a bridge swing so this should be the back of Coronet Peak I believe pull around this corner here just using all the room Oops. still got all the room in case I need to turn I've got good exits 
plenty of energy. Okay, so we'll just make our way up to this ridge here to cross. You can see this four-wheel drive track, pretty cool road actually. The speed's good, we are climbing into that ridge, but I've got plenty of speed, so I'm happy and I'm going to cross it on this angle here, so we can uh, still make a pretty tight turn if we need to. Yeah, it's probably a bit tight, this one. But we have the energy, and that's the main thing. Alright, there's Queenstown. So, there's Coronet Peak over in this direction. Up there, the ski field, and uh, yeah, back in Queenstown. So Arrowtown's in this corner. This is the Crown Terrace, Crown Range, Dale Field. This area here, the Remarkables we can see in front. There's Coronet Peak, so this is a ski field in the winter, and uh, there's quite a few hang gliders and um, paragliders that launch from here, and they land in a in a little field just down under the nose here somewhere. Where is that? Can't quite see it. Now this is Millbrook Resort, so this is a, uh, a golf club resort area. Pretty popular with overseas visitors. Okay, so that's the uh, area of the hang gliders land. And this is the township of Aratown which was an old uh, gold rush town from back in the 1860s or something like that. Okay, there's Morven Ferry Hill and Lake Hayes, so we'll just start the right turn here. Head over Lake Hayes. So this is Slope Hill on the right with the VOR on top. Morven Ferry Hill on the left. And this road goes up to the remarkable ski field just up in here. Lovely. Okay, we can see the flashing runway end lights here. But I think just for fun, we'll uh, make a nice tight circuit into uh, runway uh, 1-4. So that's going to require us getting pretty snug into the mountains here. So we'll start bringing the power back now. That's Slope Hill. So there should there is a VOR on top of there, the Queenstown VOR. 1136 I believe. Okay, so we're going to land on the crossing grass runway over here. Circuit altitude is about 2,100 feet, so we're obviously about uh, 500 feet low, so it's a low level circuit. Okay, gear travels. Looking for three greens, so be nose first. Here it goes. Mains are out. 
I need to start getting some flap out. Okay, flap 15. Okay, so the runway we're looking for um, is just running along here. Pretty much can't really see it yet, but we will. So RPM goes to full. So I'm flying the airplane a lot slower now on the approaches. I was flying them pretty quick, 50 or 80 or 90 knots, but um, yeah, it feels a bit more comfortable. It's still a bit nose high for my liking. It's a big power line. All right, here's the little runway. So uh, it's a good short field aircraft by all accounts, so should have no problem getting it down on this strip. Back in the days when I flew here, I was based here, uh, this was just grass, so it's nice to have a seal runway. 50 knots. Okay. That's it. All right, no worries at all. So back in Queenstown, so that was just a little bit of a local flight, getting a feel for the uh, latest update on the VL3 from the community. Yeah, good little plane, definitely different to the last one. I, it's somewhere in between the most um, the, the previous iteration and the default version, I have to say. Um, but it handles very well, you know, it's a... Um, a really cool machine so you know full credit to the guys and this livery is excellent as well um, a few issues with that uh, engine uh, indications there we can see that that oil temperatures already shot right up back into the yellow there so that should not be the case um, so that needs to be addressed and the uh, the fuel tank situation also um, when you deselect the tank it should go back to white. If you're going to model with a different color, then uh, it needs to work in both switching to it and switching off it as well. Uh, but other than that, um, yeah, hard to say if I prefer this. I think it's fine. I mean, I'll, I'll keep flying it, certainly. Um, it did feel like there's a little bit too much adverse yaw at slow speed with the, uh, with the roll, um, which could be reduced. I'm not sure how you do that, but uh, it did feel like the adverse yaw was a bit high. But other than that, um, yeah, good job. We'll turn those strobes off. Backup battery can go off. I'm just going to um, park up on the grass here and shut it down for the night. That'll do us. Very cool. Alright, so uh, yeah, thanks for watching another video. Probably a bit boring for most people now. Not quite, uh, not talking quite as much in this one. Um, but I was uh, just enjoying taking in the scenery. So you might have got something out of it. But um, thanks a lot for watching. Cheers.